Okay, so the, the labs, um, I think April covered a lot of that. And boy, has this changed. We always laugh amongst ourselves that, you know, we, would, we did four of these last year virtually. I could tell you that they are never the same. The questions you ask, the feedback that we get, never the change. But when we started doing this, God, these bloods, I would be repeating so many of these bloods like every couple of months, and then we've gone to barely doing them. But I think the TB evaluation at baseline is good just in general, and it depends where you live, right? There may be some, a lot of um, uh, baseline TB in your community, and you probably want to know they have, even if your drug's not going to make them worse, you probably want to know if they have TB and if they can, you can help them with that. Hep B the same. Hepatitis will come up. If you, if you order these hep panels, you'll find C and a low grade B like once or twice a year, and you save yourself a whole lot of heartache by knowing that. The CBC, the comprehensive metabolic rate, it's a bit of a fishing expedition. You're going in and saying, all right, I'm starting with a pretty healthy person. And then HIV, that's your discretion. The coxy titles, like coxo and histo, I don't do much in New York, but you do it, right? Yes, absolutely. Because you're in the you know, Southwest. Mm -hmm. And I'll make one comment about the annual skin exam. You should do a total body exam when you look at somebody because it's the only way to do body surface area. And nothing is more impenetrable to a prior authorization than a modified PASI score, modified easy score, meaning the your erythema on a, on a just representative plaque is a three out of four. The scale is a two out of four. The, the induration is a two out of four. And there's 40% total body surface area. No one's arguing they have moderate to severe. It's over for the carrier to say not qualified. But when you have someone covered with eczema or psoriasis, I don't know about you, but I have a hell of a time um, seeing a superficial basal cell or squamous cell carcinoma in situ in the middle of a plaque of psoriasis and go, that's psoriasis, that's a squamous cell, they look the same to me. They all look the same. So you're going to look for pigmented lesions when you do that initial exam and anything that's very obvious, like a pearly papule on someone's nose, okay, you'll get that. But once you get them clear, right, and you tell them in advance, like, listen, if you have a skin cancer hiding out here, it's under um, camouflage. So when you clear someone and you see them three months later and there's a basal cell and a squamous cell there, the first thing they're going to think of is that that medicine you gave me gave me two skin cancers. No, the medicine cleared it so we could see the skin cancers, and you've obviated that problem by saying, we won't be able to tell you have a skin cancer until you're clear, because they're all red and flaky. And guess what? Half your body's red and flaky. Just another tip that keeps you out of trouble, keeps you on the right side of the team effort that you are with the patient on. Now, when am I going to repeat these? I'm often asked to do the TB evaluation. And my personal take is for psoriasis. Um, if this person's going to a primary care doctor and getting their regular routine bloods, I'm accepting that as my checkbox, and I'm done. For, for most drugs. Um, I'm, I'm still you know, playing with the tick too. How often do I need to get bloods even though the label's pretty clean? I'm still working through that. For the eczema biologics, you don't need any baseline bloods. You can if you want, if you want to look at IgE level to help you with the diagnosis, okay. Um, the, the JAKs we'll talk about later, but I get, I get the bloods more frequently. I, I'm worried I can't detect cytopenias with history, <laughs> you know? Um, I, I think that's, that's such a great discussion, David. Um, I think for, the, uh, uh, for your documentation, the payers are typically looking for these thresholds for your number, for, for approval for a biologic, so body surface area of 10% or greater. If you put a POSI score, typically 12 or greater. If you put a PGA or IGA, three or greater, so either three or four. So that's what they're looking for. And uh, just a few tips also, if you have a patient, let's say they have, you know, not that much, let's say 3% on the torso, but they have 
more severe diffuse scalp disease. So the entire scalp is 7%, right? So if they have it diffusely uh, involved, that's 7%. And let's say they have 3%, that would actually qualify them. Um, <clears throat> some payers, not all of them, will have special allowances for special sites like Palmer, Plantar, genital areas like we talked about before, but not always. So uh, sometimes I'll be like Palmer, Plantar, psoriasis, you know, 4% denied, <laughs> you know? So, so, and then because when you put those, and also when you put these numbers, I think they must, they probably have AI now. <laughs> They're like, is this number above a certain, you know, threshold or something mm -hmm. like that? So, so just, just so that you know, what the numbers that they're looking for. I think for AD, which I will talk, we'll probably talk about later, it's typically also 10% or greater, but the easy score if you put one is typically 16 or greater, and then the IGA or PGA will be three or four, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, the, the, uh, the global assessment is a gimme. It's your interpret, it's the, it used to be called the investigator or the physician global assessment. It's just global assessment. You put global assessment three slash four or four slash four, that's your opinion because it's based on the totality of the involvement and it's hard to challenge um, and you've made a professional judgment on that and you should put it, I put it in, I put a global assessment in. The other thing, again, we're a little off the topic of the labs, but um, after a certain amount of time on drug, you should and demonstrate some objective measure of improvement. They are 75% better. They are nearly clear. They are 90% better. They are 100% better. Write that down. It's so obvious because you're going to write clear, but in the assessment and plan, I'll write psoriasis. Um, <clears throat> uh, a, a 80 or uh, 90 to 100 percent improvement, because people they'll deny they'll deny it based on non-documentation of improvement, and I can't blame them if they don't know they're getting better. Why are they spending so much money giving you the drug if it's not working? And so the labs are are valuable. Um, always co-opt with your the primary care or the specialist of of choice, and. You know what's not on here, and I do do it, is I do baseline lipid evaluation. I want to know if my, you know, 30-pound overweight, moderate to severe psoriatic patient has an LDL of 180 because they need a statin. They, they, they need to go on a statin, and they, they need to lose weight, and they need to go on a statin because they're on, they're on such high risk for MACE events. I, I, you I, might not agree. No, 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 uh, I, I agree. I agree with that. I, I was gonna just add some of the, I thought some of the practical tips, David, that you gave was, were really good. I just wanted to add, make sure you tell them, like I, I see my patients every six months once they're stable, right? Um, some of them cannot make it every six months, and, but, but it's very important that, that you see them before a year is over. The reason is because if they, if the year time passes, you may have to do a lot of the paperwork again. And in fact, I make a very militant point to my patients. I say, I need you to be here at every visit because I need to show that you're improving and in order to get this drug, like you, you have to be here and I need to assess you, you know, either in person or, or via telemedicine. But because I wanna see them annually for the skin check, they have to be here in person annually. And I tell them, don't, and then schedule it, not like too close to what a year is, you know, just a little bit before that because there's always, time needed for that paperwork and, and, and also prevent you uh, from having your office from having to do a lot of the paperwork again. Uh, so, so there's an average apparently 40 touch points for a patient from that conversation to when they actually get a biologic. So th there are like just so many different processes involved. So um, we wanna make sure it continues to be smooth. So I, I really make a very important point for them to return to see me on time, especially that before the yearly mark. And, and you can control that. You have 100% control of that with the amount of refills you give. So don't give 500 refills because you know you're going to want to see them in six months. Give them enough so that they literally need to come get you to get the refill. It's a, it's a good way to make sure you don't miss those time points. I think the other thing too is that patients 
don't always remember to call and update us when their health changes. Yes. So, you know, we've talked about the malignancies, right? We've all practiced long enough. We've all had patients on biologics that have developed a malignancy, and they don't think to stop their biologic. They don't think to call us, and I think that's really important, that six-month time frame, because, okay, any changes in your health? Oh, yeah, I, I saw my oncologist, and I'm starting treatment for prostate cancer. Okay. <laughs> now we need to have a discussion about your biologic. And I, I found, um, I, I think those points are right on and very, I, I hope you feel are practical. Um, I, I've used for psoriasis and eczema for stable patients, I've used that um, four to six month follow up, I've used telemed for that. Because number one, psoriasis is very easy to see. Once you know the patient, psoriasis plaques are very easy to see on video. Eczema is a little trickier. Right, when you're doing body surface area, you have a lot of discretion. Like, because a plaque of psoriasis, it's here, but it's not here. They're so discreet. But eczema kind of waffles through. I mean, some, I think some investigators will say 40% body surface area you show to another person, it's 20. And neither of them are wrong. But I do use telemed as an update for uh, health maintenance, uh, side effects. Um, they can send pictures. But I do want them in once a year just so I can check and make sure they're not growing skin cancer or something like that. But if you do telemedicine, these are easy ones. These are really easy telemedicine visits, and they count in your documentation and, and of improvement as well. So that, that's a pretty valuable. And these drugs are so good. We never had this problem. When we were on cyclosporin or methotrexate, we had patients come back every month or two, every month or two for bloods and assessments. Patients, they're clear, they get four shots a year, you can never bring them back. They, they like, they don't wanna come in. <laughs> sure. All right, so what happens when you have a patient that comes back with the dreaded indeterminate quantifiron golds, or they have a positive quantifiron golds? So that's when you start to freak out. <laughs> no, <laughs> but you do when it's your first one. It's like if you get a, you know, a urine pregnancy on an Accutane patient, it's positive and you know you lose it. Well, you take a deep breath <laughs> with that one and you send them back to the lab and get another test. So with the, the Quantiferum goal is a very sensitive lab that needs to be drawn and handled appropriately in the lab. So there's a lot of opportunity for errors. So you want to the first thing you want to do is have them repeat that lab. Maybe they would go to a different lab. So if it was Quest this time, they go to LabCorp the next. Uh, also, because it's so sensitive, if the blood sits around for multiple days, it can uh, cause the indeterminate result. So if it's drawn on a Monday or Tuesday, you're going to have the best chance at not getting an indeterminate. Um, then uh, if it comes back as negative, you know, you're in business. If you get a positive and you repeat it and it's positive, then we're in the realm that I practice in the Bay Area, we've got pretty easy access to infectious disease. So I have them evaluated by infectious disease, um, whether they're determined latent or active with their TB status, they'll be uh, initiated on medication. At that point, I go ahead and initiate biologic therapy once their either latent or active TB has been, uh, the treatment's been initiated. Yeah, I, I think uh, I completely agree with uh, what Jill said. I think a um, few things. One is that if you get a positive uh, quant gold, um, get a chest x-ray as well. If the chest x-ray is negative, then the patient's presumed to have latent TB. Um, there. So then you can determine if you want to treat that latent TB yourself or have ID treat it. Um, I think the CDC guidelines are actually pretty straightforward. Now the, nowadays they have three months or four months treatment for latent TB. Um, and uh, I usually check a baseline LFT and start them on latent tr uh, TB treatment because um, where I practice there are a lot of uh, TB, you know, there are a lot of patients who are from either TB endemic areas or travel to. And then, um, and then I basically start them on biologics concurrently. Um, if, they are, if their quant gold is positive, their chest x-ray is positive, then I refer, then they have active TB, right? Then I refer them to, um, to ID. 
uh, and, and also, you know, just the wait to get to ID is <laughs> really long. So that's why, you know, we, we treat the latent TV ourselves. But um, yeah, and then, um, then after that, uh, uh, then essentially then, you know, for a patient, um, you know, who, who's been treated, you know, then who has a history of latent TV, who's being treated, kind of going forward, you know, then you have to make sure that you assess for risk of TB and, and that going forward. But, uh, um, but yeah, and, and I, I would, if you can, avoid TNF inhibitors, like I said before, um, choose IL-17 or IL-23 inhibitors because there's actually data with um, gaselkumab specifically, but likely apply to all the uh, IL-23 inhibitors. They, they follow people who had treated latent TB um, who were start on gaselkumab five years, how many chances of recurrence? Zero. So, um, so I think, you know, really that that pathway, you know, doesn't seem to affect um, TB status, which is, which is nice, so. And then what? annually thereafter, when you're doing the TB test, are you just doing a chest X-ray or are you doing a quantifieron gold? Yeah, so um, I do a chest X-ray um, uh, for, for the patients and, and also a symptom check. Okay. Um, Typically, the quantifieron gold can stay positive for exactly. quite some time, even yeah. after treatment. Right. Yeah, and also, uh, just to contextualize it a little bit, because that was, I can't, I can't add more to that. You, you're going to get two different kinds of intermediate or positives. One, in screening before you've started something, or two, in follow-up while they're on treatment. And they both create a different kind of anxiety in you, right? So if it's before you've started, you're a superstar. You just like detected a problem. They, maybe they won't give it to their family members or something like that. You'll get it treated. But do ask about symptoms. Any fever, cough, weight loss, night sweats. If they're feeling fine, this was a random day in their life that they discovered it. They didn't just get TB yesterday. You discovered it and like, holy crap, I got to get this thing started immediately. This could have been going on for years and they're asymptomatic. I get them to ID, and if they say it's like two months, I said, all right, let me see if I can make a call to get it sooner because it's gonna affect you starting your psoriasis meds. The other, if it's positive during your treatment, ask about symptoms. If they're doing okay, they may have had their IL-23 shot six weeks ago, so you still have six weeks before the next one anyway. So just, you know, these are things you remain calm about. If they're coughing, coughing up blood, losing weight, night sweats, you gotta fast track them. You know, even to the ER, if, if you can't get them into an ID, just get them into the system, and you'll worry about your psoriasis drugs in the next week or two or three. And then as far as the, the coxy titer, so typically what I would do with that, so I'm in Arizona, and we have a fair amount of coccidiomycosis, you know, I see a lot of positives come back. I'll send them to their primary care. Usually in Arizona, it's very hard to get people into IZ in months. So typically primary carers will treat them. They'll start them on fluconazole, and then I typically wait 30 days. Once they've been on their fluconazole for 30 days, I'll restart their biologic at that point. Questions? Then, the, then the also sim, sim, symptom check. Yeah, just yeah, exactly. You know, are um, you know are they nice sweats, uh, weight loss, and yeah, yeah. I don't do the T spot. Yeah. Any other questions before we move on? I will, I will continue, has, as, as long as our TB is treated, uh, I will continue the biologic, okay. yeah. So um, it's from the past and now they want to go back on. Right, right. Um, I think I, in, so, so they, they have, they have uh, if I'm not sure about the history, I would order a chest x-ray, yeah. And um, just to reiterate, you'd want to choose an IL-13 or IL-17 versus a TNF alpha inhibitor. I-23. 23. Oh, what did I say? 13. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, it could have been for eczema. It could have been for eczema. I dug that 13 <laughs> remark. That sounds good to that. <laughs> All right. 
So this is just a reference sheet. So when you're ordering your hepatitis B labs and they come back and you're not sure, it can be a little bit confusing. This is a nice reference that you can look at and say, okay, this patient has been vaccinated or they have a resolved infection or an active TB infection. So that is a nice reference. See some people taking photos. Everybody get, get a photo? Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, I think that's a really nice reference. Um, the, the, the first thing I look for is, is, the, is the surface antigen positive. Yeah. If a positive, you stop and then, like, you know, really look at, yeah. But when the surface antibody is positive, the patients think for sure they have hepatitis. So you have to go back to them and say, great news, the vaccine worked. Um, or you're cured if you had it, right? Because they'll see positive if it just says hepatitis to them, mm -hmm. right? There. right? I mean, we have a hard time interpreting that.